Narcotics Bureau? Will you put me through to Charles Sturgis? Quickly, please. Not here. All right, then. Murphy, somebody. Murphy? Hello, Mr. Murphy. I've been trying to locate Charles. Can you get a message to him? Go ahead. Tell him I think it's worked. The man that I'm to meet is from Philadelphia, and they call him Mac. It's Frank McNally. I'm certain of it. No one's seen him. I know no one has seen him, but this is the man. How did you play it? I think I'm an addict, and I need it. Now, listen. He's calling here, and then we're going to a club. Will you have somebody follow me? Sure. Charles, if possible. You all right? Sure. I'm all right. I'm shaking like a leaf, but it'll pass. Take it easy. Bye. Hi, sweetie. Yeah, oh. looks swell this evening. Hmm. I should have dressed for you. <laughs> hmm. Forgive me, honey. Somebody wants to get real loaded, that I can understand. It's normal if you know what I mean. But this I don't get. You never figure how guys get themselves hooked like this. Still, it makes you happy, makes me happy. It's all money. Yeah, I want you to do something for me. Get hold of Jack, give him some dough, tell him to lie low for a couple of weeks. Something's cooking on the other side. I want to give it my personal attention. I'll need to see Jack when I come back. <laughs> That's what I said. I see you, Joe. about your kid sister, Charles. We just couldn't get you in time. Bring it up! 
there. The show's over. Come along now, bring it up there. I don't go for tennis and shorts. Don't play the Wimbledon court. Must say I'm nothing at sports. I'd probably freeze, fall down, break both of my knees at one spot. I'm really at ease. Anyone for love? I've never won any medals for being clever or bright. I'm just a I'm really a mess, but don't lose my name and address. Anyone for love? I'm sorry, I'm dry. One glass. For hockey, I've little concern. Can't skate. I never could love one thing. I constantly yearn anyone for love. The hunting, I shoot the decoy. Yachting, run into a boy. But one sport I really enjoy. Anyone for love. I've never set any records. A games that take any strength to lead the field romantically. Again, I'll say for LGA picnics. Can't live in a camp outdoors. It's always so damp, but indoors. Shake hands in a chair. Anyone for love? Anyone for Customers like that too, but they kept good.
have you been? Crawls around with my belly in the gutter, looking for dope peddlers, needle pushers. Same filthy thing day in and day out. Now I get a little tired, too. I'd like to get a hold of a couple of million dollars from one of these foundations and hire a few doctors, find out why people keep sticking needles in themselves. I'd like to do that a lot, but I'm too busy here trying to find out how the junk gets into the country. I figure that's more important. I get discouraged, too. Every now and again, we get some little junkie in here who's so far down the line, he's making half a buck profit on a $20 shot. He doesn't even know what year it is. Never mind who's hiring him. Doesn't seem to add up, does it? Is that all? No, that's not all. If you'd quit playing the personal crusader and check with the department once in a while, you might find out what you're accomplishing. Just what are we accomplishing? We got the little joker in here who's supplying your waitress friend. Just another slimy, broken down. Who knows? Listen. All right, so your contact said his name was Cashlin. I, I, I didn't get his name. Would you recognize him? I, I guess so. If I saw him. I got news for you, Mosker. You're out of sin. Now. Is that the guy? Take him out. Sit down, Cashlin. We want to hear some more about this friend of yours. What's his name? McNally? I told you all about him yesterday. You know what morphine is and what it does to you? You asked me that yesterday, too. And you know you can't just bring it ashore like that. Well, like... Look, guys, everybody tries to pick up a little extra. Yesterday, you told us about a man you met in a bar in Bordeaux. I'd like to check those names again. What names? Start with the name of the man you met in the bar. I just happened to meet him. It was just a guy who didn't hear his name. Well, suppose you tell us the names you did hear. Look, I don't want to get in no kind of trouble. Cashling, you're in so much trouble now, it's going to make your ears wiggle. You can help yourself if you quit stalling. Tell us everything you know. I heard him talk about one guy called Sarko and Guido. Go on. Well, then that was his Mac character. McNally. Concentrate on McNally. Tell us everything you know about him. Everything. Oh. Well, he was some kind of a big shot. Frank McNally, I think his name was. And, but he used to change around quite a bit. He could be O'Connell sometimes. On O'Hara. Interpol figures he's back in the same old racket under a new name. Yeah, what do you got? Radio from Interpol London to Narcotics Bureau New York. Information received that McNally's partner, Jabo Salko, living here under false papers. Do you require any action from us? Tell him to sit on him. Keep him on ice. Murphy, I've told you a dozen times that Salko's in Europe. And wherever he is, McNally can't be far away. Now let's stop kidding each other and send me over there. Now I'll think about it. That's all you do is think about it. Will you stop trying to fight a one-man war? I'll let you know. What's eating him? He wants to bring in McNally. Well, why not? Now, this is a bit before your time. Sturgis's sister used to work for us. McNally murdered her. Before that, I figured Sturgis was the best man we ever had. He still is. This is to Interpol Paris. Notify London, interested Salco. Hold immediate action pending arrival tomorrow, our representative, Charles Sturgis. <laughs>
Interpol's making the world smaller every day now for the international criminal. By turning up a file, Interpol can tell you if a crook smokes Turkish cigarettes, twitches his nose when talking, or a hate spaghetti. What does Sarko hate? Right. It was here in the Mediterranean that this particular group caused the most trouble. Tangier, Marseilles, Naples. Cigarettes on the whole, you understand? Got quite nasty in the end. Quite a surprising number of the chaps turned up dead or disappeared. And most of the survivors, we feel, are doing morphine and heroin and that sort of stuff now. Yeah, that was McNally's old line. Mm -hmm. All we have on McNally is a sort of composite mental picture. No one's ever seen him. No photographs. He works behind other people. We have heard it said that he's insane. The only way we can find him is through one of his lurid friends. About the Sarko. <laughs> Sarko? He's had a go at a bit of everything, including white slavery. But he's been quite discreet lately. Changed everything about himself. His methods, his habits, his name, even his face. Taken himself apart, you might say. But we've put him back together again, like Humpty Dumpty, with the aid of three or four other countries. He's in for a big surprise. Yeah. Take a look at the ugly brute. You'll find him changed, of course. Largely for the worse. Anyway, we're paying him a visit later on today. Go inside. You needn't wait. <laughs> Shut your mouth. been working for us. How long have you been working for the company? I didn't hear what you said. I'm in a hurry. If everything is all right, may I have the case back? Why are you so nervous? Stay around a while. You know something? You're very beautiful.
of Zedon Masako. Get Allison over here with this little brush. Looks as though somebody's taken Humpty Dumpty apart again. set of prints. Couldn't ask for better if you invited her around to the yard. Well, let's get to work and see if we can find a few more. Right, sir. Well, look who's here. Frank, please get rid of them. I can't spoil the party, darling. It only started yesterday. Miss Frank, I, no, no, I've got to come talk. Along. I want to talk to you now. You've been a naughty girl. Back in a minute, a little business, chums. A very naughty girl. I've heard all about it. You scared a little, darling? Yes, I know how you feel. The first kill's always a bit trying. I had no idea you were such a good shot. You must try one of those relaxing pills or that hot stuff they advertise before you go don't to sleep. Don't joke, Frank. If you want to help me, I don't know where. I'll help you, doll. It's just going to be a little expensive, that's all. I'll take care of everything. My partner is no great loss. You haven't got to worry about anything. You just go on looking beautiful. I wish someone would paint you. I wish I could. I'd rather see you hung in the Royal Academy than... Well, than just hung. Fortunately, my partner hasn't been around much lately. He won't be missed. Now, I've got something I want you to do for me. No. Things are moving rather fast for me just now. I'm going to need you. Find somebody else. And you're going to need me, Gina. Just leave me alone. Alone? Have you any idea what would happen to you if I left you alone? Don't you know what happens to girls who shoot people? The law is very strict about this sort of thing, you know. It says you can't go around shooting people, no matter how unpleasant you find their advances. <laughs> Awfully silly, isn't it? But there you are. But when you have good friends to take care of things. Yes, now. I have to go presently. I have to see some people later on tonight. I'm going to Rome in the morning. I want you to go to Lisbon. Your tickets are in here. This is where I want you to go in Lisbon. There's something I want you to pick up there for me and bring it over to me in Rome. What is it? Just something I want you to pick up, darling. Will you meet me? It's all taken care of. No, no, no. Don't worry about what's happened today. Unless you decide not to do as I tell you, then you can start worrying. You see, doll, we both need each other. Here's a little present for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I may borrow it back later, but just now it's yours. You just want me to get it through customs. Oh, Gina, now don't be so cruel. <laughs> Say your mum gave it to you. Don't forget to smile at the boys. Frank. Yeah? Sometimes I think you are a little mad. <laughs> no, I got a certificate a long time ago to say I was saying. I'll bet you haven't got one. Well, it's coming through now, sir. Oh. It's faster than I imagined. We're in luck, aren't we? I have verified fingerprints. Code number 845 as Gina Broger. Holding Greek passport number 8241, issued Athens, 10th of April 1950. No known criminal record, but friendly with McNally and Salko. Whereabouts at present unknown. Hmm, pretty good. Gilling, get up. What are the chances of finding her? Pretty good. Take us down, huh? To Interpol, Paris. Excellence, and thanks very much. Will you please circularize all bureaus and alert all immigration authorities?
Portuguese money have you? About 5,000 scooters. How much Portuguese money do you have, senor? 7,000 scooters. Excuse me, just a moment, please, senorita. All of these Manana countries, don't you think? What? <laughs> I don't suppose you've ever been in Bolivia. I'll give you a tip. Never arrive in Bolivia on a Saturday, Sunday, or Tuesday. Sorry to keep you waiting, Thank you. senorita. Thank you. Thank you. Interpol Lisbon to Interpol London. Gina Broja arrived this morning. Registered Hotel Grand National Estoril. Do you want surveillance? Hmm. Yes, I think we do, don't we? Reply yes. How long will it take to get down there? You're quite sure that that's the thing to do? Quite sure. Ask Paris to tell Lisbon that Charles Sturgis is arriving. Wait here, please. Madame? I'm looking for a valise or case of some sort. Uh, for letters or jewellery? Your work was recommended by Mr. Salvana of Paris. He thought you might have something suitable. I believe I have just what you want. Entirely handmade, finest leather. Thank you, madam. Thank you, Zimo. To the airport, please. a personal call to Rome. The name is Guido Martinelli. Rome 498629. I think I know who it is. All right. The American. Probably the one we were told about. He's been following the girl. All right. Keep a lookout. If he shows up here, I'll look after him. Or you can. So, con il sole tutto va bene. Allora, ciao. Hi, Barris. What did you say? Is this time our little cargo? I didn't say. Heroin or morphine? Any difference to you? <laughs> I understand heroin is bringing better prices in the States. That's why it's heroin. You've been studying the fluctuating market, haven't you, Barris? How are you getting it into Athens? Who'd expect Lebanese opium processed in Naples to go to New York by way of Athens? Brilliant, don't you think? When do you sail? Any time from the 10th on. I do not control the loading, you know. How much is there this time? Well, I must know. Mm. To judge the space. Mm. To make the best arrangements. About 70 kilos. 
70 kilos. I haven't planned on so much. Do you realize this is worth three million dollars? You have been studying the market, haven't you, Barris? I too understand you have made some very good buys in Tangier, in industrial diamonds. It should easily cover your expenses. I see no reason why I shouldn't have a fair profit too. No, 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 no. Under these circumstances, I cannot offer you my facilities for less than $50,000 or the equivalent. No. Perhaps you would like to find someone else. We're not going to quarrel, Barris. There's not time. <laughs> Sweet kids, these, aren't they? They bring out the family man in me. We will not quarrel. No, we will not quarrel. But I'd like to give you a little warning. Don't try to blackmail me again, or we might. See you around. your seat belts, please. Will you put your cigarette out, please? Sorry. You remember me? Go away. Oh, I mistake you. I thought you were a friend of mine, you know? <laughs> I apologize. Varoli, Captain Varoli, I was asked to meet you. There's much more of that scrimmage on the field than met the eye. Perhaps so. That other plane, could you find out where it's gone? Of course. Connect me with the airport, please. I wish to speak with Signor Borghese. Borghese control. This is Captain Varoli. Which local plane left one hour ago? Yes, Capitan. That will be number 11 to Napoli, arriving there at 1832. See. Any minute now. 
There's a lot of stuff this time you could retire on that. I intend to. You retire on this. How much? Five thousand. Could you make it five and a half? No, I couldn't. I took a big risk this time. That's your problem. Give me the keys. I'm in a hurry. I'll work with you. Make me poor all my life. Life's pretty short, amigo. What about this car? Oh, never mind. That's not your business. I'll look after that. Right. Get to work. How did you get in here? You shouldn't leave your key in the door. Anyone might walk in. A cook or anyone. Thanks for the case. Any trouble with customs? Customs? No. How's my wandering girl? I suppose you came for those. Oh, dear. Well, they look much prettier on you than they do on me. Anyway, there's no problem. I'm more concerned at the moment with a certain gentleman who appears to be interested in you. It may have something to do with Salka, of course. On the other hand, it may have something to do with me. Anyway, he's following you. Frank, I... I can't get on with any longer. Oh, nonsense, dear. Now, look, it's ten o'clock. I want you dressed and out of here in half an hour. Just take a walk anywhere. Do you know the catacombs? My dear, you haven't been to Rome and not seen the catacombs. That's where you should finish your walk. Be there at 12. Your key, honey. Ciao.
catacombs, please. to the catacombs here. Don't get lost in the catacombs. Spooky, spooky. Know where you are all the time. Aspirin, flashlights, Alka-Seltzer, ice pack. Ah, lady, everybody needs a guidebook. Want to be able to tell the bones no, apart, tell you. the Christian bones from the pagan bones, huh? Complete historical information, all about, how about a flashlight? Very dark in the catacombs. Spooky, spooky. Make sure you don't fall over. Get a run in your stocking. Doesn't anybody want to buy a flashlight? Use any razor blades today, Max? All types, kinds, genuine American razor blades. Best deal you can buy. Well, how about a flashlight for the catacombs? See away in the dark. It's awfully dark down there, Max. How about a nice tie? Genuine American silk ties. You really ought to have some of these blades, Max. They're the most. This is the best deal you can buy. No? Well, how about some nice pictures of pretty girls, huh? I got a better idea. How about some sunglasses for the catacombs? Sunglasses for the catacombs, Joe. Look, Max, if you had some sunglasses, I'd buy them from you. You look like a man who writes home. How about a pen? But we come now to what might, with historical justification, be termed the original catacombs of Rome. Now, since the ancient topographical name of this ground was Ad Catacombus, from which the modern word catacombs is derived, and which was later extended uh, to mean any subterranean burial ground. Throughout the fourth century, interments here were customary, but they became rarer towards the end of that century and were entirely discontinued in the fifth. I would like everyone to keep together as the arrangement of the catacombs is extremely complicated. Narrow passages, two and a half feet wide, or this way, were excavated and furnished with loculi, or recesses in the walls, exactly the length of the body to be interred. During the frequent devastations undergone by the city, the catacombs were also tillaged and injured. The first time on the occasion of the siege by the Goths in 537. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna keep you on the move. But why was I don't have to tell you why. In a few days you're going to Athens. Right now, get back to your hotel. Not that way. The next is over there. Make it fast. He caused 28 wagon loads of the bones of the saints to be deposited beneath the altar. The catacombs, however, still enjoy the veneration of pilgrims and the devout. Now, Pope Damasus I caused numerous restorations to be made, and staircases were constructed to facilitate the access of visitors. During the third century, the persecuted Christians frequently sought sanctuary in the catacombs. Now, many of these unfortunates, as perhaps you know, suffered martyrdom here in their very place of refuge. Now we come to the tombs of four bishops, murdered in this very spot. I'm sorry, I, I should have warned you. The mask was cast after death. <sighs>
Can I help you, senor? For a moment, I thought you could. Hey, you sure you don't want any razor blades today, Max? I use an electric razor. You look like a man with a problem. Take I care know. of that, will you? Who has it? I'm from New York, myself. 121st Amsterdam Avenue. I got a bad break. You know how it is. They get one person mixed up with another person who maybe was possibly mixed up in some kind of racket. Before you know where you are, they hand you your exhibition papers. I got no complaints. Some of the boys hold complaints. My name? Amalio. I do all right. You know how it is. Buck here, buck there. Six years now. For me, it's not too bad. So happens I'm familiar with the language. I like spaghetti all right. I keep in touch. So I sometimes find myself in a position to be of help. Like now. As a friendly type offer, just let me say this. She ain't coming out, Max. Not today. You're watching a dry hole. Her and her friends left. They ain't gonna show. What friends? Ah, introduction type offer's over now, Max. From here on in, strictly business. You wouldn't be uh, interested in money, would you? I tell you what I'm gonna do with you. I'm gonna make you a real reasonable type offer. I think I get the picture here in a general way. You a cop or something like that? I see what you mean. Anyway, first thing I got to do is ask a few questions around, find out what the word is on this individual she meets down there who uh, I think I recognize. Interested? It all depends who the individual is. I make a few phone calls, arrangements like that, uh, for which I get a keeper, huh? Say. 50? Make it 25. I'm gonna write you down a place we meet later on tonight. If I come up with anything you want, you pay me, say, say 250. It all depends what it is. Well, while you're making up your mind, Max, uh, be my guest, huh? outside the catacombs. He sells news to the police. Does he now? Let's see if we can cook up something for him. Something very special for Mr. Sturgis. He's still tailing the girl. Get her on the phone. But if we Get bring her, her on the phone, I want to talk to her. right in here tonight, if you know what I mean. One or two individual persons I don't recognize. We can have our little talk while we promenade along. 200 okay? Depends on what you've got. This individual that interests you, uh, what did you say you thought his name was? Mac something or other? His name could be McNally. What do you think it is? I don't have that information yet, but I get the idea he had to go dark a couple of years ago. Something in Tangier. Dark? What do you mean? Dark, incognito, skippity hop. Bought himself a handful of all kinds of passports. Got himself fixed up with a little plastic surgery. The name he uses depends on what day of the week it is. The only reason I was able to get this is 
This is no popularity boy in some quarters, I know. Competitive business, you understand. What business? Happy stuff. Amalio, I think I should tell you. If anyone does anything twisty with me, I get mad. Uh, Max, uh, we was talking about $200? The first installment. I'll take you to a place. There's a hotel up that alley on your right. First floor, room seven. Walk right in, you're expected. Don't tell me you wanted to see me. Here I am. I'll make it fast. Sit down. The minute I'm tired of chasing you, or anything happens to me, they'll pick you up faster than the $20 gold piece. I sound fascinating. I stopped being fascinated by dope peddlers a long time ago. You can go on acting like you're brave if you want to. But you're in trouble. Serious trouble. But what I want from you is Frank McNally. You help me find him. And I'll do everything in my power to help you. Sturgis is here. Have him to send someone down and get me out of this dump. Signore, you are here on Captain Barone's orders. That's impossible. It is for your own safety, Signore. I'll worry about my safety. Just go call Barone. I think this will not be necessary, Signore. What do you mean it won't be necessary? Seated, Mr. Sturgis. What's the idea of holding me in jail? I think my men have already explained that to you. Please sit down. 
It may interest you to know that at this moment you are the target of every thug in Rome who carries a gun. There's only one thug I care about. I understand that. But there appear to be some things that you do not understand. Mr. Sturgis, I work not only for, but with Interpol. Interpol is an organization that depends more on, on cooperation than on the kind of rash individual action that you have just displayed. Commissioner Breckner in London, Commissioner Roque in Paris, they are not only my associates, but also my very close friends. When they ask me to do something, I do it. In this case, I have tried to work with you, to protect you. I have done my best. My men have done their best. In fact, it is quite possible one of them saved your life last night. If you want our cooperation in the future, then you must give us yours. We must work together, not at cross purposes. All right. I'm wrong. Where's the girl? She left Rome for Athens this morning, but uh, the Greek police have just arrested someone who may interest you even more than Miss Proja. A man, if you can call him that, by the name of Etienne Fayala. How does he fit in? London informed me that he worked for Salco and also probably for McNally. Ah. Uh -huh. Interpol Athens to Interpol Rome. Etienne Fayala has confessed he worked for Salco and McNally. Stop. He brought Salco to Athens and believes he is still alive and hiding here. Stop. We'll hold action pending arrival interested parties. Very interested. If you go now to Ciampino Airport, you can make connection with the London Athens plane. This will get you on board the plane. On it, you will meet Mr. Curtis from London. He is going to Athens to identify Fayala and... Uh, and also to take care of you. You'd better keep my cell dust. I might be back. Hey, Max, how to shape up? Did you meet the girl all right? Yeah. But you forgot to tell me that she had six boyfriends. Oh, now, hold it, Max. Don't get the wrong impression. Would I be here right now if I was going to cross you, huh? Just don't. Do you know where she is now? Athens. Athens? What would she be doing goofing off to a crazy place like Athens? Because she's a goof. Oh, Amalio. If you ever need any extra change, I'll see you there. You know me, Max. I hate money. Lovely old city, Athens. Always wanted to get a look at it. Let me see the picture of Fayol again. I tried to do as you say, but... Fayala, we are getting very tired of following you around. You helped bring Sarko from London. So you should know where he is. He's never in one place more than one or two days. He's always moving. I've got another idea. I've got a friend. Maybe he can help. We're going now, huh? Let's go. the street. Come on. Come on. Where is this? Why am I coming here? I'm very tired. I'm not so strong to travel. Oh, I said I'm always moving. You're coming here because this is where I want you. Don't worry now, I'm going to take care of you. You've got everything you need here, so stay put. I would like to see a girl again. Well, let me see her again. I have something to say to her. Very hot. I have a bad pain. I think I'm going to die. Oh, At least you've got to sign. I need something yes, now. Yes, come on here. Now. I need some ready cash to operate with. It's in the interest of our partnership. After you, sir.
You've got to move fast. Your plane goes at five. I'm not coming with you, Frank. No, we're going separately. We'll meet in New York. Go straight to the Bellevue on Lexington. By the way, I'll need those bracelets. I'm running a bit short. But two weeks from now, honey, don't worry. I'll have all the money a man can give a woman. Yes, and here are your tickets. Frank. Huh? I meant I'm not coming with you. You are not going to tell me what to do anymore. <laughs> Stupid girl. Here are your tickets. Do you realize I could have had any doll doing errands for me? But I've never wanted any doll. We'll meet on the other side. If we don't, well, just take a salco. See that she catches that plane. I'm going to be busy for a few hours, so don't look for me unless it's very urgent. Nothing here. Okay, special information. Then you hear a minute, Max? What did you find out? I get around, Max. It's my business. My business is your business. Uh, don't bother with no introductions. I got big news for you. Very interesting. Well, I figure you'll betray my uh, traveling expenses, printing costs, you understand. Got me a beautiful passport. Cost me a hundred bucks. All right. Well, that to be the cranberry bush, uh, this is a major type operation. Merchandise headed for the States worth maybe uh, five million. Gina Broja has been located in Athens. Yeah, also I found out why your girl won't talk. She is very hot from both sides. She put holes to an individual's head in London, and uh, the individual's name was Silke, Sulky, Sucker, some cocker maybe name like that. You heard about it. You have her covered? Yes. Let's go. Car. I want to keep my eye on. Play your cards right, you get a bonus. find McNally. It's urgent. The dockyard? Already? All right, all right. Dockyard? I've got to get through to the Rio Allegro. Uh, but this is very important. Ah. Excuse me. 
please. What's all this about a refrigerator coming aboard for you? <laughs> to keep my beer can. I'm paying for it myself. You held up sailing three quarters of an hour because of that? It must be here at any moment. I shall sail the minute it is on board. The company makes the schedules, Captain. You'll follow them. You'll sail as soon as I get ashore, whether your own personal comforts are aboard or not. Nothing by remaining silent. For the last time, what can you tell us of the man you know as Frank McNally? This airway ticket to New York, did McNally give it to you? Did he? Kill me. Did McNally give you the airway ticket? Yes, yes. And you were to meet him in New York? Answer the question. Were you or were you not arranging to meet him in New York? If you don't try to help I'm us. trying to help you. I am. If you really want to help us, tell me everything you know about McNally. How does he look now? Anything and everything that you could possibly think of, regardless of how important you think it is. He's a man about 40. Average height and built. Eyes blue, very penetrating. Does he have any special mannerisms of any kind? Telephone for Mr. Sturgis. It is urgent. Get your hat and coat on. Information, grade A type, coming up. That individual I followed. Seems like he's trying to get a message through to McNally. Just now, he was on to the dockyard asking for some ship, uh, rear leg, re, leg, uh, some cocker maybe name like that. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, just a minute ago, he went out of here and he stole a Fiat van. Did you get the number? Match, I got the number. A1595. Oh, oh and Max, uh, I think this information's worth me. Glass of water.
Captain Barris. 8241, held by police. I think that's Gina Broger's passport number. Let's check. Do you have a Captain Barris working for this company? Uh, yes, sir. He is the skipper of the Rio Allegro. Where is she now? She left Port uh, ten minutes ago, sir. New York? Yes, sir, direct. How long has this captain been working for you? Oh, not long, sir. He is one of our relief personnel. Thanks. Pan American Airways announcing the departure of Flight 155 to New York. Will all passengers prepare to embark immediately? Pan American Airways announcing the departure of Flight 155 to New York. Will all passengers prepare to embark immediately? Got her under wraps. Did you bring her statement? Yeah. Problems, Gerald? I think I'm a little surprised. It's the main problem. That's what I asked you to do for me. Jack? Sure, he's a nice. I want to see him right away. I'm waiting for a boat to come in. When it arrives, we're really turning. Hey, Joe. Like clockwork. Four days in the guts of that thing, there just isn't anything there. We did everything but take up the plates. Come on, boys, let's go. Well, that's that. Come on, Charles, I'll buy you a drink. You going back, I'll see you later. Well, I don't know what you're going to accomplish. Have it your own way.
How long now? About five minutes. How many trips will you have to make? Three, I guess. I'll be back the same time tomorrow. They're going to get the stuff through. Don't worry, that's taken care of. Right. Watch your step. I'll do that. person can identify him. Sturgis says for you to bring her down. Okay. Have Gina Broger ready to travel in five minutes.
hope this will be the last body you'll ever have to identify. Well, that's it. Break it up there. Come along now, break it up there. Okay, let's go. Move along. Hey, Max, Max. My buddy gives me the word to look you up. My brother Amalio, that is. He couldn't get here personal on account he's tied up in Italy right now. Uh, just for a little while, if you know what I mean. A couple of years. Uh, the way I get it, there are little money's due on uh, completion of the job. He says for you to pay me. Tell Amalio when he gets out, there's a little bonus for him. Much obliged, Max. Hey, if you ever want a receipt, I'll mail it to you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't take any wooden nickels. I'll see you around. <laughs>